Hey, what's up guys? So today I'm gonna to be talking about my favorite custom settings for hybrid shooting on the a7 III and a7R III. So of course, both these cameras are largely the same when it comes to the menu and control layouts. The only real difference is that the a7R III has a few extra features and it actually has one more memory recall mode, but otherwise it's exactly the same. And for my use and my purposes, I really have the exact same setup for both cameras. So we use these cameras a lot to shoot photos and video of everything from family stuff all the way to professional settings like weddings and events. So naturally we had to come up with ways that we could access all the settings and all the menus really quickly to be able to switch from photo to video in a variety of different situations. But I don't want this video to be a solid half hour of just looking through my camera menus. So what I'm gonna do is just flash up all my custom settings right now, and then you can pause if you like and copy them down. And along with those settings, I just wanna go through some of the other general settings that you're not gonna find inside the custom menus. So for me, I'm 99% of the time on continuous autofocus with these cameras, since you know on Sony cameras, continuous AF is really, really good, it's really accurate. And I just use the shutter button to activate my autofocus. I also shoot uncompressed RAW with JPEG on these cameras so that I can keep the files at 14-bit color, even if I'm shooting high-speed bursts. And I can also preview the images on the back of the screen and quickly zoom in to check focus and make sure I got the shot. As you may know, if you just shoot raw, um, it takes the camera a second to build the previews and then zoom in to check focus. So I generally just have that JPEG on hand to speed up the whole process. And lastly, we use an HLG profile when we're shooting video because we found it offers great dynamic range with relatively no drawbacks um, in terms of low light performance and things like that. And again, I'm just gonna flash up all these settings here and then you can copy them down if you like. As I said, we just find this a great all-purpose picture profile and we just basically use it for all of our video recording needs. All right, so instead of going into great detail about all the specifics of my setup, I'm just gonna jump into the camera and go through some of the common scenarios that I typically find myself in during wedding days and how my camera setup helps me through those scenarios. All right, so first up, I wanna talk about just general setting changes on the a7 III and how I have that set up. So I typically have aperture set to the front dial here and shutter speed on the rear dial. And that's just because in general shooting conditions, um, while I'm holding the camera with my finger on the shutter button, it's just natural to have my thumb here on the rear dial. And I typically change my shutter speed a lot more often than I change my aperture. So it makes sense to have this as accessible as possible, just able to change my shutter speed on the fly and adjust for exposure in changing situations. Next we have ISO. So I actually have my ISO set to C1. So if I hit C1, it brings up my ISO and I've kind of course, just go up and down through these menus. But what I like to do instead is actually use this rear dial again to go up and down full stops. And I just find that a lot easier because I can actually memorize, you know, going from 200 to 800 is just two stops. So I can quickly adjust two whole stops in ISO. And um, I just find that a lot easier on the fly to adjust for different situations. And the reason why I like this as well is because it keeps my hand in an ergonomic position. Um, I'm not moving my entire grip to access this dial down here and you know it just keeps my hand in a normal shooting position. All right so to change white balance um, I just have this right button here on the d-pad. So typically when I'm shooting a wedding I'm on the Kelvin adjustment which means that if I want to change the white balance all I have to do is hit right twice and I'm already able to adjust my white balance. Nice and easy like that. And last but not least, there's the joystick, which can of course move your focus area around. And then clicking the joystick just recenters the focus spot into the middle, which is nice and handy because sometimes, you know, the focus spot is down here, you don't realize it, and then you can just click to recenter it so you know where it is. And I just usually stick with the medium spot focus area just because I usually find it to be, you know, the best for general scenarios. Um, specific enough that it doesn't get confused about where you want to focus but um, wide enough that it gives the camera a lot of contrast to then find focus on the subject. All right, so when it comes to video specific settings, um, most 
of the dials and everything are exactly the same setup. So we have shutter speed here, aperture, ISO is the same with C1. Um, white balance and everything is gonna be the same, but we have some other video specific features that I'm gonna get to with some other custom buttons. So AF on is going to adjust our audio levels. We have AEL is actually gonna to toggle our manual focus. So if I hit that once, it just goes into manual focus and I can hit it again to go back to autofocus, which I find it a really quick and easy setup because a lot of my lenses don't have the autofocus manual focus switch. So it's great just having a quick button to press to um, get into those modes. Other than that, we have this left button here, which is gonna jump into our APS-C crop, an extremely useful feature on these Sony cameras. And it actually makes it really hard to not shoot with a Sony full frame body to take advantage of that APS-C crop. And then of course we have C4 here, which brings up our picture profiles. As I said, I'm usually leaving it on PP2 for my HLG profile, but there are some other profiles which I might wanna use in specific settings like log or a really contrasty profile for extreme low light performance. Um, so I just have that menu accessible with C4 so I can quickly access those. All right, so next I wanna talk about switching between photo and video on the fly during a shoot. And the way I do that is I don't actually use the video mode on this camera. Instead, I save my video settings to one and two on this dial here and then use M for all of my photography needs. So if I'm in manual mode for shooting photos, of course I have my settings, um, say I'm shooting outdoors at so, you know, 800th of a second, I'm at 1.8, ISO 800 to expose properly, um, just for whatever reason I'd be at these settings. I can quickly go to one on my memory recall, and that just brings me to my 4K video mode. So as you can see, it's 4K, 24 frames a second, already at 50th of a second shutter speed, my aperture set, as well as my ISO. And then if I just change to two, that brings me to my 1080p 120 frames a second video setting, which is, you know, obviously 1080p 120 frames a second. I'm at a shutter speed of one over 250th, aperture and ISO kind of set there as well. So the way I kind of work this around, so say I'm in a setting and I get my exposure set, say ISO 800, I can go into my white balance and change my white balance to something that looks proper. So once I have that, I can actually hit down, which brings up my memory recall save function, go to two, save slot two, and now it's registered in slot two. So if I go back to photo, shoot some photos like this, I can go back to two and quickly start shooting some slow motion footage with those settings I just saved. So I find that the absolute quickest way to switch between photo and video on this camera, since using the normal video mode on this camera, um, these settings like shutter speed and aperture and ISO are tied to your photo settings, which means you'll have to adjust if you wanna switch your video and then you're gonna have to adjust those settings again when you switch back to photo. So saving it to one and two just saves a lot of time and I find it really helpful with this camera. Okay, so next up I wanna talk about shooting something like a first kiss or a bouquet toss, something that you have to capture a very specific moment in time and really make sure that the camera doesn't mess up like its focus or exposure or something like that. So generally I just keep this on manual settings. Um, you can see right now it's on single shot drive mode. So my left button is gonna bring up my drive mode settings. I can go down right to burst mode, which is right there. And then I have my AEL set up. So if I hold it down, it's gonna function like a focus hold. So I can actually focus on what I wanna focus on. I can hold my AEL button and that's gonna put it in manual focus. And then I can actually press C2 twice to give me my focus magnifier. So I can make sure that what I wanna focus on is in fact in focus and we're ready to go. Hit C2 twice to get out of there and then you're ready to shoot away. So with a click of just a few buttons, um, I'm right into being able to shoot something like First Kiss or Bouquet Toss, which sometimes, you know, those scenarios kind of sneak up on you and you have to adjust really quickly on the fly. Okay, so next I want to talk about shooting portraits with this camera. So I just have AF on set to turn on face and eye priority. And basically what this means is that I can just put my medium spot focus over a face or something I want to focus on. It's gonna to look to see if there's a face or an eye for it to focus on within that medium spot, and then it's gonna focus on it. If I don't have a face or an eye within that uh, focus area, then it's going to just kind of regularly focus like normal. But if there is, 
then it's going to focus on that face or that eye, making it really, really handy for portraits. And of course, just having it easily on AFON, you can just switch that off if needed, um, making it really, really accessible. All right, so next up, I wanna talk about using flash with these cameras. So as you can see, I am wildly underexposed here, but say I am exposed for my ambient exposure, right? And when I attach the flash, you can see that the camera jumps into like an auto exposure preview with the back screen, which uh, works fine for my purposes. So now I like to jump into my menu and I usually have my camera just on this auto review function. So if I hit menu, it's right there and I can turn this on. And the reason why I like to do that is because it gives me a really quick image preview of the flash firing. So I can make sure that the image is properly exposed. Everything's good, the flash is fired. And if I'm in a group photo setting, um, everyone is smiling and looking at the camera. And of course, when I'm done using the flash and I take it off, I can quickly just turn auto review off and then adjust my settings to expose for the scene. All right, so we really quickly switched to the A7R3 for the next one. Um, I think it's a situation that a lot of people find themselves in where they are shooting you know, natural light at an event or a reception or something like that. And you have your camera settings exposed for that natural light, but you, know, you get called on to do a group photo in the moment and you want to have an easy way to adjust your camera settings for that on-camera flash. So luckily with the A7R3, we actually have three memory recall modes so I can go to memory recall three and actually have that set up for my flash. So when I turn that on, my settings are good to go for the group photo and I can just take the picture and we're good to go. So I found that super useful. Um, on the a7 III, that's typically my wide camera anyways. So I typically have my wide lens on it, you know, for group pictures and things like that. So it's just great to have an extra memory recall mode so I can have video for one and two and my flash settings for three and have M mode saved for just general shooting in ambient lighting conditions. All right, so next up, I wanna talk about um, getting in the moment reaction photos. So say, you know, you're doing a artistic shot with really weird camera settings. Um, say you're doing like a silhouette or something like that and something happens and at a moment's notice, you have to whip the camera around and get a decent exposure of whatever happened. Um, what's great on this a7 III is that I can actually set up C4 in photo mode to bring up kind of like an auto setting that I've saved within the camera itself. So if I hit C4 and hold it, it goes to one over 2 50th of a second, aperture priority and ISO auto, um, white balance of 5,000 Kelvin, and it's on burst rate with center focus engaged. So I can just quickly just grab a shot of whatever I need to, and the camera's just gonna take care of all of the exposure adjustments that I need. All right, and another feature I like on this camera is that I can really quickly turn the screen brightness up um, kind of on the fly. So we've all been there, you know, outside on a sunny day, we're trying to use the back screen, but you're getting a lot of glare from the bright sunlight. So I customized C3 to easily access sunny weather mode. That way it just really increases the contrast and brightness of the screen so I can see my composition and see what I'm doing. Um, as terms of exposure, because obviously this screen in sunny weather mode won't give you an accurate preview of your exposure. Um, I just look through my viewfinder, set my exposure, and then I'm able to compose using the back screen, especially if I'm doing a low angle or something like that. I find this feature really, really helpful. Okay, so doing time lapses is another strength of this camera after the version three update. And we can easily just turn on those time-lapse settings by going into the function menu and then just switching that on. And what I usually do is I go into aperture priority in my time lapses just so it can, you know, adjust for changes in scene. But the main takeaways is single shot autofocus with silent shutter in aperture priority and then everything else is taken care of with the camera. And of course, if I wanna adjust any settings, it's found right here in my menu. If I go down here into the Lomino shoot function and I can get to all of my interval times, um, number of shots, tracking sensitivity, and so on and so forth. And last but not least, I wanna talk about rating these images in camera. So if I go to play and go to an image that I've taken, um, I actually customized C1 to give it a star rating. So I can go one, two, three, four, five, and then back to zero. So I'll typically go one 
um, that will be my general setting if I want to select this photo as a teaser. And then when I bring this photo into Photo Mechanic, I can sort by my one stars and just really quickly find those photos that I want to use as teasers. So I find that really helpful. Um, once again, just if you want to do teasers on the fly and rate photos in camera, you can set up something like C1 to give you that rating. And of course, all the setups that I talked about here um, can be modified for casual use just by changing the ISO and the white balance to auto. This gives pretty great results for the majority of situations, although we found that we need to set the exposure compensation to plus one and the white balance to white priority. All right, so hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions at all, please don't hesitate to drop a question down below and I'll do my best to answer it as quickly as possible. I really feel like this setup is best for us and our needs but of course your needs may vary so by all means modify the setup as you see fit and if you guys like this video please consider subscribing to see more tutorials and gear videos we're going to be uploading a lot more in the coming months so stay tuned for that all right thank you guys so much for watching and until the next one i'll see you guys later